So Neelu Kalro is a passionate and compassionate educator with a strong belief in skill development for life and child at the center of education. She is currently the IBDP CAS coordinator and heading the early years at JBCN International School, Oshiwara. She holds the position of Territory Head, ECA in Mumbai. She is, she is an early years parenting expert and advocates choice childhood and education. Welcome, Neelu. Thank you so much, Amrita. And good evening to all the people who are present here with us today. Thank you for taking out time and being here to exchange ideas with us. Thank you very much. Hi, Bela. Welcome. And um, let me tell you all about Bela. Bela has always been very fond of children. She is passionate about teaching and puppetry. She believes that using puppets at home and school makes learning much more effective. She is the founder and principal of Cosmic Kids International Preschool and Daycare. In her very busy schedule, she still takes out time for her puppet shows as she loves to spread joy and happiness. She is also part of the National Core Committee of ECA. So welcome again. Thank you, yeah. Amrita, for the lovely introduction. And I'm happy to be here on the panel. Hi, Neelu. And Hi, let's Nila. go ahead. Yes. Hi. I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, introduce Rekha also because when she comes in, she can just join and we don't right. have to introduce her at that time. Right. Right. Makes sense. Yes. So Rekha is the ex-principal of Kamla High School. She is the trustee of SBSS and PCGT. She trains IAS officers and police on compassionate policing. She has been uh, part, of the, part of the education industry since 30 years and has written many articles and stories for early childhood. She is also part of the core team member of ETST, that is Education Today and Society Tomorrow, when she, where she trains principals, teachers, and students. She runs programs called Kuch Or in 25 schools in Mumbai, which focus on lessons on responsible citizenship, values, and governance. She is also the diplomatic secretary of ECA and APO. So, Rekha, even though you're not here, everybody over here is welcoming you. <laughs> Warm welcome. Yes. So, I think we'll start with the discussion, and when Rekha comes in, she'll just join in. Yes, please. So, today's topic is importance of teaching home chores to children. Before I get on to asking you all about children, I want to ask the panelists, tell me how has this lockdown been for you? How has been handling the home chores at home been for you? You know, has it been uh, challenging? Has it been fun? And what is your attitude? What is your take on home chores, which you are doing? <laughs> Nila, you want me Nilu. to start with that? Yes, Nilu. we can start first. Yes. Nilu, start. So yes, it's been a very interesting phase, a very different phase, because I think these are the things we started moving a little away from. I won't say that we completely went away from doing household chores, but somewhere work and other stuff and everything took a little more precedence. And right now is when you realize, when you do it, that this is what is reality. And this is how we are responsible for our own selves. So I won't hesitate to say that it was a challenging period, but over the days that it went by and uh, when we got used to the entire thing, we, you know, we struck a balance between work and between the household chores. So it's now enjoyable, though let's see how long this lasts. <laughs> so I get that you're quite enjoying it also, Nilu. I can see that from your face, you're looking quite happy and animated. <laughs> right. What about you, Bela? I, as for me, I've been a little lucky. I have a full-time maid in the house, so okay. the house is not, not that bad. But I've started uh, helping her a bit because she's got too much on her plate. So I've actually started cooking a bit in the kitchen and, you know, maybe even uh, taking groceries and sorting them out and keeping them well. And uh, that's the only thing that I've been doing right now. Okay, so good. Has this been enjoyable or not? Oh, I haven't yes, yes. that bit. It is enjoyable, but of course, you're waiting to get back to routine as well. 
missing okay. school <laughs> missing my kids okay. that way um, so, so I- if i add something here uh this animated expression that you can see and this joy that you can see comes with having spent so many years with learners of early years you know so that's the beauty of working in the education space absolutely you know this is the stage where everybody who works with early uh, years and with young children never grows old because you can grow old with the way you look but your mind is, is always young so i really get where you are and as for me i think i'm getting that degree in sweeping swapping mopping dusting <laughs> it's it i am ready i can give any exam and pass you know very well <laughs> wonderful yeah. so great so now i was just looking up what the definition of chore was in the dictionary and the definition of chore is a routine task especially a household one it also says it's a tedious but necessary task all right so by this i sort of understand it is all the routine tasks that we do every day and what need to be done whether we like it or we don't like it correct so my question to you nilu is do you think we are compromising on children's childhood by giving them these household chores okay so i hear your question and what i'm hearing are three c's here which stand out for me okay mm. the first one being children mm. second one being compromise third mm. one being chores okay i take one at a time letters words that begin with a c when we talk about children what we talk about is stressful and joyous education and childhood that's the very essence of what it is so definitely i don't think the word compromise has any way to be here and as educators as parents as uh, people who are having siblings and tending to younger learners and uh, a community that understands that these are future citizens of the world we all have to come together to not try and make it a compromise right so as you said chore the word chore itself a routine task tedious is how you see it it depends on how much workload is it that you're carrying and how you space out well so when you talk about chores and when you talk about children what are the things that children can learn through these routine tasks so if i give a different twist to the word chores let me not call it a chore because then it sounds tedious going by the definition per se so let me call it what we call in the language of theory or what we call in the language of early years education learning engagements activities stuff that you enjoy stuff you that you keep doing time and again because that is good to develop skills of self management so organizing is the biggest skill that a child learns right the child learns at a very young age that mama woke me up at this time now i should be doing this this is what i need to do next so that's your skill building that's happening through these routine activities and who best but the first teacher and the second teacher that is the home and the family to take this forward so to answer your question very very clearly now that i have kind of placed the context on what i'm saying amrita i feel household chores are definitely not in any way compromising a child's childhood in fact they are helping us to build on life skills on skills of social emotional learning your self management skills a very high level of self esteem where when you're able to complete a certain task in hand whether it is just picking up this tray with two glasses of water and keeping it there carefully that only means that wow i am capable of doing it i contributed right so that's how i see it i hope i've answered your question amrita i think wonderful nilu you have answered it perfectly i can see so many things coming out of this whole thing and we'll take a we'll as take on it and then yes then i, I was can similar, tell you more uh, yeah i have a similar perspective because even i believe that for children it's all about play so if you're going to make it fun for the child it's no longer going to be a chore I remember an example when I was a kid. My mom used to give us. Uh, I don't. You, I'm sure you all must have heard about guar the beans. Mm. So my my brother, my sister, and me, three of us together, sitting around my mother. My mother is chopping the beans, and what she would do is, my brother was older than me by uh, two uh, two years. My sister is younger to me by one and a half years. 
So my brother would, my brother, my mother told my brother, you will, you are going to take all the long beans and make a bunch of five five. Oh, Tell me, you okay. take the mid-sized bean, you take a make a bunch of five, and my little sister would make a shortest bean and then a bunch of five, and we would all gear together. She could easily chop the beans off. So make the task fun and uh, fun for the child, so he enjoys doing what he's doing, interacting with the sibling as well. Okay, this is the short one, this is the long one. You can take this, you take that. You can share with your colleague, uh, friend the same way. You know, the, your sibling the same way. So I think we really learn to make it fun for the child. He no longer is going to feel it's a chore. He's going to enjoy what he's doing. And of course, it depends on your attitude as, as well. If you're going to say it's so boring, I'm not going to enjoy this, it passes on to the child as well. So try and make it as excitement, exciting for the child, and you should enjoy doing it yourself first. That's what I believe in. Absolutely, I think we've got a whole belt out here. You know, when I'm hearing all these lovely words, the words which are coming to me are contribution, involvement, family bonding. You know, being with your siblings, being with your parents, carrying your tray, taking things from here to there. I mean, where do you learn these skills? This is the first teacher, like Neeru just said. This is your first teacher. Your house, your home, your family. And where else would you learn all this? And everything depends on your attitude. I am so awed by everything that is said out here. Really coming from the heart. And everything depends on your own attitude. So if your attitude is good and you are making it exciting for yourself and the child, I think then it really works for everybody. Great. Amrita, can I say yeah. something for our audience here? Something that sure, so wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. As a mother and a mother to a teenager, so when I uh, when my daughter was younger, so it was very easy to get her to do things. And do you know how I did that? So I'm going to share a very personal experience here, not just as an educator, but as a mother also. So yes. I would sing to her very often because I was used to singing in my classrooms. So I would sing, it's time to straighten our bed sheets, our bed sheets, our bed sheets. It's time to straighten our bed sheets. We're going to do it together. I just had to say that and the chores became tasks which were fun. So Bela, I completely second what you say. Thank you. Great. So, you know, when you're saying that, uh, Nilu, and that song was wonderful, I think every mother should now adopt this song <laughs> and uh, use it at home. But uh, I just like a teacher said, it's time to put your toys away. So I think yes. this is really nice to take home to do your things at home. Yes. But, you know, I'm also reminded of my childhood and I also want to share. Uh, you know, for us, it was always fun. If there was a party in the house, it was everyone was given different tasks. You know, my sister had to get out the cutlery. I had to lay out the crockery. And we would see who would do it faster, <laughs> you know, or who did it better, or who were the mother pat on the back. So I think that whole thing was, we would wait. When is there going to be a party for us to be able to show off that we know how to do it so well? So I think... Uh, yes. This is all about attitude and all about the way you are looking at it. Wonderful. Great, which brings us to the next question. What is the right age to start doing these chores? So when do they start? So, Bela, what do you want I to say? I think uh, they could start the minute they enter preschool. I think even a two-year-old can do certain tasks. Like even when they join school, even from home, they should do actually. We can sing the song, it's time to put your toys away. That's one of the tasks that they learn the first thing. Just clean up your room, all the tidy mess, put nicely in one box, clear up your place. And also some, uh, something that they learn is uh, disciplining also at the same time. Routine is set up at that time when they do chores. And uh, also mealtime, I think, when the parents are feeding the child. We mm. can also ask them to take the plate inside the kitchen or, you know, even to help take the plate to the table. Small, small tasks that kids can do and we should encourage them from, uh, from doing it. But do not ex uh, accept them to, uh, expect them to be perfect at that. Mm. Yes. Do not look for perfection, but look for the task yes. being done. They slowly, slowly become perfect in what they are doing. And of course, give them a pat on the back, encourage them. They need all the motivation to do the task. And soon they'll be helping you in all your chores possible. What about you, Nilu? What do you have to say? Thank you, Bela. You really reminded me of my own childhood. And I'm going to give, mm. an, ex uh, I'm going to give you an experience that I share here. When I was younger, right at the age of one and a half, I remember... Not very clearly. This is what my elder sister tells me. And she tells me that you were very good at folding napkins. 
now how okay. this came later was you used to do it so well at that point in time so now folding napkins is your job so it would always come to me because i folded it it well not realizing today when after i went through the education bit and all that stuff we realized that folding napkins putting them in order straightening something is nothing but a very high level of fine motor skills moving towards those skills where you learn how to put things together your craft activities together so really every learner is unique every child learns at his or her own pace of development and the way they want to pick up it also depends on how the environment that is your immediate family supports what you're doing at home and kind of encourages you to do it so as you said bela one and a half two years definitely is a time when they are eager to help your sorting of rajma chana the child knows he has to sort it this way he or she and he or she also knows that if i put it in any part which is not the right part mama is guiding me correcting me and telling so so many things happening together so not really a right age but as you said one and a half two is when children can actively be encouraged and rightfully said no expectations out of that and focus on the positive i know you will carry that tray well rather than saying be careful that's going to drop because then you're Which focusing is- on the negative you'd rather put something that is a positive and let the child take it up from there so right. well said both of you really when i got from you that the whole journey has to be wonderful you know right. it is not this whole task and this whole task can be so intimidating you know and it's a big task over here make your bed or you know pick up that tray or sort this or do this but the whole thing is it's a fun thing and just allow and let it happen at its own pace because every learner is unique and from you neelu it's so nice wonderful you know how to uh, fold napkins but i also know a lot of other things about you from what you said you have great organizing skills because people who know how to fold napkins properly can organize themselves very well they're also very precise and if people sort rajma and chana and things like that you are building cognitive skills in the child you know and you also doing pre math activities so a child is doing tasks but he is also learning different things there is a social emotional development happening there is a cognitive development happening there are fine motor skill development happening there's a gross motor skill development happening using your arms your hands your feet and also using your mind i think this is so wonderful also getting that whole thing about being with a family while you do it Excellent. Can I add a point, uh, Amrita? Surely, surely, surely. Uh, what I've noticed in schools also, what happens is parents normally when they bring the little babies, they want to carry them in the arms mm-hmm. and get them. When the baby can actually walk, but they want to, they want to cushion the baby. They want the baby should not fall, should not get hurt. Overprotective parents, of course, they also carry the child's bag. They carry the child's water bottle. I'm sure the child can do it on his own. So, I request yes. to all the parents, please let your child be independent. Please let your child be independent. Bela. I'm guilty of the same yes. crime. <laughs> so I was that mother who lifted her tight, who thought up everything that no, my baby is going to be away for one and a half two hours. Yes. And when I reached school, I realized, and of course the teachers did guide me and tell me that because you are so anxious and you're holding her so tight, she is not letting you go. There is right. so much of separation anxiety. So I so agree with you that we have to give them that independence to be able to. do that task then you know i am reminded of an uh, an incident and this incident happened more than 20 years back when i was a preschool coordinator this child used to come to the school and used to cry and howl all right every day and this happened for uh, not even a week or two weeks but for much longer and we were wondering why and one day we spoke yeah. to the child and asked why are you crying like this and she said because my mama is feeling bad that i'm coming to school Yes. So it wasn't all about her. It was about her mother feeling bad that she was coming to school. <laughs> you know, sometimes we just let our fears get onto that child. And what we want to say is, have a nice time. I'm going to be perfectly all right, and you're going to be perfectly all right. I think that is what needs to go. Absolutely, Bela. And all your mothers don't make the mistakes that we made. So. <laughs> let your child carry his own bag and help himself because he is learning a lot while he's doing it i have my eye on the chat here 
and i'm reading uh-huh. some very very interesting things people have done the same things that we've done with their 1.5 year old daughter <laughs> oh, wow. and they've done it really perfectly well so thank you dear audience yes oh wonderful i'm so happy i'm not seeing the chat but wonderful if you all are experiencing everything we experienced please don't make the mistakes that we made yes. <laughs> yeah so now the next question is should these chores be rewarded so hmm. what do you have to say neil hmm so what i is your take? have a very strong thought process on rewards by itself amrita hmm. and uh, i believe in reinforcements uh i believe in intangible rewards so yes every chore every task every first step that a child takes should be rewarded every attempt to anything should be rewarded but how that's a very big question so rewards are nothing but a form of positive reinforcement and even your touch on the head shabash good job i really like the way you cleared the table i really like the way you helped me because i was feeling a little tired today i want you to pick this up because you do it so well even better than your sister and next time she will take her turn so by rewarding in such a manner where you are actually rewarding the act and clarifying to the child as to why is it that you're giving a positive feedback that is very very important because a child should know you know words like good or bad nobody is good and nobody is bad everybody is the way they are and sometimes there is something there you know in their behavior that needs to kind of alter or change a little for it to be more acceptable so i am all for rewards but rewards in a positive clear and a specific way also mm-hmm. they should be timely if your child has done that thing today and let's say she has finished a uh, drawing independently she's seen something she or he and they've drawn it independently telling the child i like the way you sat for about 15 minutes and focused on your drawing and it's so beautiful you know so that for me is a reward neelu you have stolen my words <laughs> <laughs> so we have the same thought process and you've just spoken exactly what my feelings are so i really don't know what more can add to the way you've explained it to me uh, i don't have anything to add to that it's superb okay wonderful so you know neelu what i'm getting from this whole thing is uh, you're looking at acknowledgement as a reward From yes. what I get, right? Yes. So acknowledgement is the reward, and not basically a tangible re- reward like no, you made your bed or you carried your bag. So I'm going to be giving you one piece of cake, you know? Or mm. if you do this, you will get that. I think those days of toffees and cakes are over. I think now they're becoming gadgets and uh, mobile phones and things like that. But whatever. The point is not to give a tangible reward, but to acknowledge the child for what they've done. To also look at what has been done in that uh, experience of the child for for you to actually acknowledge the experience and what has been done and not label the child as a good child or a bad child because he has not done a task right absolutely so i'm also getting back a lot of uh, memories you know um, i remember i uh, used to make my cupboard and one day my mother came and checked our cupboards and we were three children and she saw mine and she said you know your cupboard is so neat and everything is put so perfectly you know that was when i was 10 years old i'm uh, many decades more than that i'm not getting into how many right now but decades after that when i open my cupboard i think of what my mother would say my cupboard is always so neat and it's because she acknowledged me when i was 10 years old and that has stayed on for so many years so i think when you acknowledge a person that that stays on i mean if she had given me those two sweets or she would have given me a piece of cake or whatever i don't think i would have ever remembered it but something like this goes a long long way right and i never felt like a good girl for uh, making my cupboard i mean mm. it was this is the kind of person you have become you have become a neat person or you have become a a person who keeps their cupboard well or does things in a particular way because people are viewing it and seeing it so wonderful wonderful both of you have similar uh, thoughts, Amita, i guess if i may just add here i cannot yes. go off the you know the topic of rewards without touching upon two important crucial things i'm sure bela will agree with me 
One is uh, that children have to learn to earn their reward. So Very you true. have to see what was the activity, what was the task. If the child is regularly doing that, yes, do give a reward, a verbal reward, a non-verbal gesture, however. But also for every little thing that is being done, if you're going to say, good job, I really like that. I really like that. The essence, is it really going back to the child? That's something I leave for each parent, each educator to think about. And second things, rewards. And I see that in the chat. Somebody has written that. And that's really wonderful that the audience is on our same wavelength. Can rewards be used as a bargain? That if you do this, you get that. Then there is, it's a never ending process. And you're only up, you're only, you know, kind of making the height of uh, giving rewards and tangible rewards. It's never ending. So I'm very thankful that the audience is also with us uh, in this thought process. And you know, that is like dangling the carrot, carrot over carrot. there. And the minute the carrot is not there, then uh, the no, horse is not running. So, I mean, we don't want that for our children, right? We want our children to be able to run anyways. No. And to have the joy of running and to have that feeling of self-achievement. Even that whole feeling, thing. it's okay. Try again. As many attempts as you want to, please try again. Sorry, I interjected you there. No, absolutely. All right. This is what I was also saying. That but secondly, what I also feel is children nowadays are looking for instant gratification. Correct. So how do we you know, balance that? Sometimes it gets a little difficult sometimes, I think. But we have to learn to stick by what we have to say. But Bela, bringing, that, bringing it back to that point, when does a child know he is getting a reward? It's right. only when the parent tells the child, nah, I am going to be True. giving you this because yes, you have yes, to yes. do this. The child has not suddenly thought of it. It's not with the child telling me, you give me this and now I will do this. That thought has never come to the child. That yes. has gone from a parent to the child. So it is up yes. to the parent right now for you to be vigilant about how are you communicating with your child. Is your uh, communication coming across as a carrot or is it coming across... I am seeing the effort you are putting in. I am seeing, uh, you know, what you have done and to have that child feel that sense of achievement. So I guess it works both ways. So it's course. not the child to blame. <laughs> yes. The child is never to blame anyway. We are early <laughs> childhood educators. So we know better. <laughs> right. Yeah. So now my next question is responsibility, a skill that can be developed. So, Bela. I think, I think while doing different kind of chores, children, of course, learn to be more responsible. They know at such and such, and such time I have to do this. A timetable is set for them. We can make a chart of timetables to be done, things to be done for the child. If he's small, a sticker can be put of the uh, task that he needs to do. So he follows routines. He follows how to do stuff. And he becomes more responsible. He becomes more independent and self-assured. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes. I have a thought to this. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I take a lot of parenting sessions. I interact a lot with parents of all age groups, including teenagers. And hello, I'm mother to a teenager. So I've been there, done that also. Uh, so I believe in the three R's of parenting. Okay, like you have the three R's in literacy. This is the term that I feel is absolutely apt. Respect, responsibility, and resilience. When children learn to do their own chores and they are doing it together with a part of their family, they learn to respect whatever the task or the work is, whether it is sweeping, swabbing, clearing the table, doing anything. Nothing is below anyone. We all have to do it the way we are doing now. And it is something that is to be respected. Children also learn that in this way, you learn to give respect to the people who help you with this. Whether it is mummy, papa, behen, dadi, dada, or your didi dadas or bhaiyas at home, right from the security guard or the watchman of your building. So there comes your first R, that is respect. Next, I want to talk about resilience. At a time like what we are facing today, it's a very uncertain time. It's a very different time. I don't ever remember having gone through a time like this. But our children and we have adapted so beautifully to it. Where do you think that comes from? Where do you think this resilience to want to do, adapt yourself and go with the flow and yet choose to be happy? That is what a self-driven individual or a child can create. We can do it ourselves for our children, for our young ones. We have to foster those values. And doing household chores, rightful topic today, builds resilience. And finally, responsibility. The third R, 
I become responsible for the decisions and the choices I make as a child or as an adult. And if I choose to clean my room today, Mama's helping me with it. She may not have time right now, but she'll come in a bit. If I choose to do that, my room is happier. If I choose to finish my activity and task on time and submit it in school, I'm happy because I've organized myself. So I believe that these life skills actually go to build exactly what you asked. Responsibility, resilience, and respect for everything we do. That's a wonderful way of uh, putting all these things together. Responsibility, resilience, respect. I can see Bela said, put up those stickers and have them start organizing themselves right from the beginning. I can see that. And what I am really getting it is having the child take ownership. So once he takes ownership of what he needs to do, then it becomes his responsibility, right? Doing your homework is your responsibility. You That's can choose. True. You can choose when you want to do it and you can choose to be happy or unhappy. You know, you mm. know there is a cost and a consequence. So I get that so clearly and that is uh, really very nice. I really love those three hours. And Bela, I think everyone's going and putting up magnets and uh, yes, you know, <laughs> small little stickers of uh, getting their, their, different shows, yes. <laughs> of their different shows. Yes, absolutely. Because Mr. these Mustafa. are the things that children need to learn right now. And when they learn these little things to take ownership for themselves, can they expand to take ownership for their community, for their family, their community, the whole uh, world around them? This is the future of tomorrow we're talking about. And we are supposed to be training the future of tomorrow and creating this whole world for the future. True. So wonderful. Great. I think Amrita, it's time to wrap up. Yeah, we have just nine minutes to go, Amrita. Oh. Gentle reminder. Yes. Great. So does anyone have any questions in these nine minutes? Does anyone want to ask anything? Thank you, Krishna. I can read that. She's missing her mentor, Rupa, who has been guiding her. Wonderful. I think everyone now uh, is now realizing uh, the value of people who have made a difference in your life. You know, my mother is coming back so much to me. Every time I'm doing my dusting and I'm doing everything over here, I can see that it is done so perfectly because my mother did it like that. And I think our attitude and the way we are is also because we are emulating the people around us. You know, so you can see everyone just shared things about their life when they were young. And um, this is all just passing on. Amrita, if I may interject here, there is a question from Pooja V. Some children do it one day and not the other. What steps can we take for them to do regularly? Uh, you know, would you like to take that? Yes. yes. Uh, that, that's very close to my heart, hence I'll take it. So um, we can only motivate our children. We can be the guiding force and we can be a living example for what they can do. So please continue as a parent or as a teacher doing what you feel is right and what needs to be done. The child will keep looking at you, watching you and learning from you. And when the child is ready to pick that up as a choice, they will definitely opt for what they have seen because you learn by doing. As Amrita said, they are always emulating what's around them. And even if you pressure them, they are not going to do it because they may just rebel and tell you, not right now, you're always after my case. Okay, a young one may do it out of fear and fear is not something that we want to foster. So continue with your reminders. I give you five minutes. Can we please remember to do that? Shall we do it together? Okay, today mama will do it for you, but from tomorrow you have to promise to do it yourself. Put up a chart of things that are non-negotiable, things that are tasks and things that you want to do. So want, have to, whatever some things can come in the frame. So this is how keep motivating your child. That's how it's going to go per se. Bela, you yeah. have something to say. Yeah, you can also tell your child that whatever you're doing is very meaningful to us. Show them the importance of the task that he's doing. Yes. And so you really appreciate if you could do that for us. I'm sure slowly the child will go, uh, will be motivated to do it correctly. I love what Krishna I, has written. I, I can see someone saying, is there a healthy competition between siblings? Is that... Uh, good yes. or bad something like that it just passed off but i can see is it acceptable to have healthy competition among siblings is what i got it's yes healthy is fine <laughs> yeah if the, the very term healthy is fine but i think it's very important here for parents not to make it competitive and not yeah. to put down one child 
to put someone else up. Any way in life, if you put one down, the other person will not uh, come up. So the whole point is that, you know, you are doing something well and the task is being done well, not you are good or you are bad. No, so secondly, that is, it becomes say, healthy. I can also yeah. add over here is at least try and balance your task with the sibling. Like my mother used to give me and my sister a task. If I would check the table, my sister would pick up the thing after it's over. And yeah. Sometimes I would say, it's not good even I want to pick up later or she wants to do it first. We just switch tasks later on. So make it a balanced task for both the siblings. That will really yes. help. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Anyone else has something else to say? Does anyone have any more questions? Uh, Amrita, I have something to say. Yes. Uh, we have Rekha, ma'am. Uh, actually, we could not put her in the session. So after this session is completed, uh, she will do her session live on ECA Facebook page. So you can request everyone to get connected on the ECA Facebook page because we have missed out to add her on this session. Wonderful, everyone. So Rekha is looking forward to meeting all of you on the ECA Facebook page. So and please log on after this. Rekha, So can she come on now, uh, Harsha? Is it uh, possible? No, actually, I'm trying to remove a few people, but then uh, a few people are getting added. So actually, it's overbooked. So we are not able to take her in. So we decided that she'll go live on the ECA Facebook page in connection to the topic that you all have taken. Okay? Now we will keep on her own, is it? Yeah, yeah. She'll do it on her okay, own. Okay, fine. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. Wonderful. Three minutes to go now. Uh, yes. Any one last question? Anybody? Before we say our byes. Okay. I got one uh, message. Please do come up with more such topics. Please do send us your topics. We'll be so happy to come up with more yes. and um, be with all of you. I just have a suggestion for all the teachers. Mm. Instead of giving the child homework, try and give them some home chores. Which they can do <laughs> and they can come back to you. Which is <laughs> really good. nice. Yes. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Any last suggestions, Nilu, from your end? I, I don't have any suggestions, but I have an observation here that I love the way the audience is so interactive. We are actually getting a cues on what should we talk about from you, Amrita. So thank you for being a fantastic moderator. Yes, you really fantastic. I have just loved this session. I'm, uh, I've been so excited about having you as panelists. And I am seeing all those questions out here right now. What if the child denies to take responsibility? I can see they're all buzzing. I think I'm maybe we should have a part two to this. And um, <laughs> it was wonderful. Thank you so much for being such an interactive uh, audience. And thank you so much for being over here with us. Thank you. Thank you and have a great bye -bye. day. Bye-bye. See you. Get bye -bye. back to your chores. <laughs> Looking forward to this. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you. Children in my house and other homes also. And um, somehow they have missed out on that joy of doing things, you know. I wish uh, parents today would give the children the opportunity to do things like even simple, like serving water to the elders or to their dads or mom when they come back from work. And uh, somewhere I feel it's also the fear factor that glass to jaga and... Uh, you know, I don't know. I see a lot of fear in today's parents that, no, how can they do it? Or this is the servant's work or this is the driver's work. And even to the extent of carrying their school bags. And uh, I wish even a simple thing like taking the school bag was left to them. Children are somehow not really, really um, up to that that we have school bag bhi le lenge. So when I'm talking of uh, school bags, I also talk when children get out of bed. I wish they would uh, actually make their beds and i don't mean make it straight but at least wrap their covering blanket they can wrap it you know so little little things that they can do and also i heard on the the fb the poster talking about uh, whether uh, we need to reward the children i don't think so it's just a basic value and upbringing that we are giving our children and it's not about today's time friends it's uh, not about the lockdown period it's about a way of life and when our children are finishing their meals, just taking them to the basin and putting them for washing and rinsing them and keeping, it's a very important factor. And there's no age for that. And uh, like I, I remember the poem, we used to do bits of paper lying on the floor. 
till this age i have grown up kids and i keep on teasing them though thankfully they are pretty disciplined because they don't live in india and everywhere abroad they have to do their own work so it's uh, really nice to know how they are managing because of the upbringing maybe somewhere they had and all was not mine it was a lot to do with my in-laws and others also but when i see my uh, husband today also doing little little things i feel it's the upbringing because uh, his mother taught him that what if you grew up and your wife uh, uh, is pregnant and delivering so you have to do yourself the work so i also feel it's the family values that make a difference is the family uh, family atmosphere and if we see certain people only working in our house then the children believe that okay it's not my job it's somebody else's job so i think we need to motivate them like amrita i saw um, i heard and so amrita sharing about how her cupboard was the best and i think that really makes it speak volume about the way you keep your desk when you grow up it talks about how we grow up and actually even keep a spoon and a you know kind of a fork at, on the day dining table and today during this lockdown period when to uh, people say that oh we don't do certain things you can live in a simple way friends our children can make the table our children can make the bed they can peel um you know potatoes for us we don't have to give them knife we don't have to be scared but they can even help us in you know drying the clothes they can help us in so many ways but that should not only be thanks to the lockdown it has to be a way of life and that way of life will only come when we actually believe it and our action speaks louder than our words so i feel our audio and video should match so if we are saying something and then we are ordering our servants to do the same thing and then the children feel oh it's the job of a maid or it's a job of the helper then they don't get it but if they feel it's a part of our life even getting it from the kitchen to the dining table or in the night suppose they are getting the milk and you teach them just come and take it from the kitchen rather than serving it to them and it has to be done gracefully it has to be done graciously it has to be done lovingly it has to be done as a part of our brushing the teeth and all coming to that when we brush our teeth The, i have seen parents saying leave it leave it i will organize the toilet i will organize the bathroom you are getting late for school please go and all i'm sorry the habits are formed there today when we see in the uh, airports or in the airplanes or in hotels it is these children of ours that actually need to understand and realize that that this discipline starts at home so i'm so very glad that as a part of early childhood association we are doing this we are inculcating we are speaking about it there was a time when there were families which were not speaking about it oh how can the children help or how can this be a boys work or how can this be a girls work i'm glad that we are sharing this and there is no work there is no work that is small or big i'll give you a very simple example of my own school we do everything ourselves over there and we have a simple philosophy if i give you a clean school i want a clean school back and we used to tell the children that if you create litter you have to clean it back and there were times when parents came to us and said i'm sorry we don't want our children to do that and i said sorry that i will not have your children there because they need to keep the premises clean it became a way of life and uh, they would serve tea they would serve coffee they would do everything there was nothing like pyun ka kaam hai one day i had two guests and um, the girls in the 10 standard served tea and i still cannot forget that incident of my life and um, two girls entered they served tea and i rang the bell and they came and then they took back the glasses and the cups before they left my room these two guests of mine said Oh Rekha we love the child labor in your school and one of them came back and said sorry ma'am you may call it child labor but in Kamla high school it's called dignity of labor and she walked out of the my office and my guests were surprised and i said this is where respect comes for your guests today at home also if we take pride in telling our student uh, our own children biological children or family kids that please serve when the guests come i think it's a beautiful way of expressing our respect or love for elders or for our guests so i feel no work is chota or bada or great or small i just feel 
as parents, as teachers, as educated, as children, as people of the society, we need to respect that. And I think we need to teach our children also the, to respect our helpers or whoever is there at home doing any kind of chores. There is nothing small, nothing big. And I can give you examples and examples in my life with my own kids. And I give you of my own daughter, there was a party in my house and uh, I still remember I used to leave very early for work and I left around 6.30 in the morning and I saw this spick and spack absolutely because it's like the kitchen of mine when i came back from the school i told her thank you and all and she said no when you get up your eyes should meet cleanliness when you enter the kitchen to have your milk you should see a clean kitchen and it really really touched me so it was not that i had taught her but she had taught me that cleanliness is a part and i don't have to always go to sleep waiting for the maid to come back uh, the next day I could do it myself you know so I just feel that these little things have to be inculcated as soon as the children are able to walk they are able to talk and please I would say the present generation who have kids from two and a half three years old let's do that for our children they will respect us when they grow up and if they are boys believe me we'll get a lot of blessings from their, their wives because that becomes a habit so they don't wait for the tea to be uh, made by the women only but it's a part of it so whoever enters the house first whether it's a man or a woman they cook the meals whoever does the beds first it's not about the gender or the sex it's about us and how we bring about our change in our life so that you know the world can be a better place to live in and we will implement our house rules and discipline outside also when we go to schools and we would be proud indians because i am finding a lot of change what we were doing we aren't doing that so over to all my wonderful friends that let's do it ourselves and take the pride in doing it and let's inculcate that values by implementing it rather than just going on telling our children what to do let us be great role models and not feel ashamed to pick up or clean we've done it always and like we know people feel ashamed to say oh my son is a taxi driver in india but they take the pride you know he's a taxi driver in australia and he's having paying for his own fees and all so let's take pride in all small little things whether it's getting the grocery or whether it's counting the money or whether it's doing little little chores or cleaning the table for tonight so over to all my friends who are watching not watching will watch later thank you very much thank you to my buddies thank you to eca for this opportunity Thank you, Amrita, Bela, and Nilu. I couldn't be there physically with you all, but we are with together. Till we meet next time for breakfast. Bye-bye and see you all soon.